Praise God, my brothers and sisters. Welcome and welcome back to another Bible study. My name is Clarence. I'm pastor of United Body of Christ Church. Uh, and once again, we welcome you and welcome you back to this Bible study. Today we'll be reviewing, uh, I believe it's chapter 5 of the uh, the, the uh, Acts of the Apostles. And then we'll go into uh, chapter 6 and hopefully we'll be able to squeeze in chapter 7. Chapter 7 is somewhat of a bit lengthy, but I... I'm uh, confident that we'll be able to cover it all. So to do so, I don't want to keep you so much at the beginning here. Uh, first of all, the, the, our formalities here. Those of you without Bibles, please go to our website, www.ubcchurch.org. Click on the online Bible tab. Uh, click the little, uh, click in the little box there to drop down the uh, books of the Bible. You'll select the. Uh, the book of Acts and uh, look for the corresponding chapters. Those of you that require prayer, no one is, ab uh, is above or under uh, the need of prayer. We definitely need prayer. Uh, this is a ministry that touches and agree with you uh, in those things concerning the will of God for your life. Uh, those of you that are imprisoned, uh, and what I mean by that, those of you that are in sin and you desire prayer, um, you know, this is what we're here for. Those of you that may know someone uh, who's being attacked or you yourselves may be attacked of the enemy. Uh, this is what we are here for, to touch and agree with you. Uh, uh, those things that you seek from God, uh, that we may touch and agree with you, that these things be restored, rebuilt, destroyed, uh, resurrected. Whatever God does uh, to revitalize your temple or to establish his purpose in your life. That's what we are here for, to pray uh, that, that you long suffer until the building process is done and that he put a hedge of protection around you and your family. Nevertheless, you can take advantage of that. It's a resource. Take advantage of that. Prayer is always a resource for the saint. Uh, go to our website, click on the, the prayer request tab. Uh, it'll take you to the prayer request uh, page, fill out that confidential information, hit the submit button. Uh, we'll get that. My wife and I will receive that. Um, we'll look it over uh, and you know, so we know what we're praying about. Uh, and we believe during the midst of our prayer that God does enlighten us or, 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 or in, in he be, we believe that he distribute us a, a sense of direction for you to help you long suffer it in the building process. Amen. Um, God is an awesome God. We've received a lot of testimonies. God is an awesome God. Uh, I was telling someone just the other day, our vocabulary is insufficient uh, when it comes to describing how God is, how good he is. Our vocabulary does not meet the standard of adjectives that, that will give picto verbal pictorials of the strength, the might, the might, the grace, and the goodness of the Father that have created us. And that's unfortunate. Uh, but as long as we move towards the goodness of God in our own hearts, what it means to us. Uh, so we bless God. Um, uh, before we begin, we want to go in and we want to thank God. Uh, in all things that we do, we give thanks to God. And, and we also want to pray uh, that, that uh, he manifests his his spirit of wisdom on this teaching today. Amen. Um, Father, we bless you. My God, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. You allowed us to sleep. You allowed us to rise. You have allowed us to rest within you. You have been good to our families. You've been good to our nation. You've been good to this planet. Lord, we hear time and time as asteroids are coming and, and they always seem to pass by millions of miles away, but they always call it a close call. I believe that you always direct the path of all things. Now, Father, I believe that you have called us to be here this day, O oh God. I believe that you are directing our path because you are good, you are mighty, you are holy. You are not only our God, which is our creator, but you are our Father, and we bless you for it. Now, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, Father, that as you have called us to eat this day, to eat the substance of your word, let it edify us, O oh God. Let it be life-changing. Open up mysteries 
Un unlock things that were hidden within your word, O oh God, that we may devour it within our spirits, that we may subdue those things that would come against us, that we would share it with others to, to tear down uh, towers of lies that have been erected, and that let this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding cultivate the relationship, Father, between you, I, and your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for entrusting your word in our hands, in our hearts, and in our lives. We honor you, my Father. We bless your mighty Son, King Jesus, O oh God, who is our pastor, who is our King, who is our Messiah. He's definitely our Savior. We bless you in your Son, Jesus Christ's holy name, and by the Spirit of God, we thank you. Amen and amen. Okay, saints, uh, I won't keep you waiting. We'll go into the review of Acts chapter 5. Um, Acts chapter 5, I love it. I, I, I love the whole book. Nevertheless, Acts uh, 5 began to talk about Ananias and Sapphira. Uh, we know that during the start of the church, uh, the disciples, the apostles, and the disciples of God, they began to... Um, they begin, they begin to allow God to take care of them through his kingdom of God, you know, and, and as I, those of you that have been with our Bible study, you've been hearing me talk more and more about the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. Uh, it is a, it, it is God taking you out of the world system. No longer do you look at your government to take care of you. No longer do you look at uh, uh, other things to take care of you that the world has been providing in a sense that you've been dependent on. Uh, once we once we establish uh, a relationship with God based on trust and dependency on God, which means we need him and we come to the realization that we need him, he begins to take care of us when we wait for him to take care of us. Amen? And he take care of them by way of his kingdom. And what happens is um, at least at the start here, we see a whole lot of the disciples taking their own personal possessions and they're liquidating them and taking the, the money of it, their own assets. They're taking the money and they're uh, um, putting it into the kingdom of God so that God would distribute according to what, what he has given someone else. They, br they have brought it back to the kingdom of God, liquidated it and, and distributed it so that no one had lack. Now, that's God's system. And what happens there, chapter 5 starts off talking about Ananias and Sapphira, how they took some personal possession of theirs and they sold it. Um, and they, uh, they kept back uh, a, a portion of the proceeds, if you will. And, and, and <laughs> I, I kind of laughed last week. You know, this is how some people do when it comes to giving tithes. They, they keep back a portion of the proceeds. And, uh, <laughs> we bless God for the Lord Jesus Christ. We could say that much, uh, you know, that God is merciful and long suffering with us. But nevertheless, this particular uh, 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 example here that was done is, is Satan. As you see here, it says uh, Peter in verse three, Peter uh, said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? And what happened is Satan tried to contaminate the 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 kingdom of God by bringing his own his own system into the kingdom of God and he was uh, using Ananias to do it and Ananias well, willingly and voluntarily let let the enemy subdue him you know or put it in his heart to do so and not only did he put it in his heart but Ananias sold the idea to his wife to get her a co-conspirator so the sin was the lie see they were not made to put in to the kingdom of God this was all done voluntarily and and of course uh the problem is to the 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 lie the deceit and try to hold things back and then also the the trying to implement the world system into the kingdom of God nevertheless when Peter confronted Ananias and Ananias dropped dead right then and there. Um, and, and some men picked Ananias up and carried him out. Uh, his wife Sapphira came in and Peter quit, Peter interrogated her. And, and of course she lied about it. And uh, Peter let her know that because of the lie that your husband told, he's dead. And, and unfortunately because of the lie that you just told, uh, uh, someone's coming in to take your carcass out to the back, if you will. 
and, and uh, uh, bury you, you know. And and uh, he he asked her, why would why have y'all considered this thing that was? And see, that's another thing. When Satan put things in our heart, we don't have to abide by it. You understand what I'm saying? We don't have to focus and meditate on it. What we are responsible for is knowing when there is an alien thought coming into us. We have an obligation to expel it. And if you're not strong enough to expel it, you know, then then you replace it, if you will. You know, some of us are able to block out negative thoughts. Some of us have a hard time blocking out negative thoughts when they when they become intrusive. So one of the other things that you're able to do is replace it. You know, if you can't get it out of you by just, you know, casting the thought out, then replace it with positive thoughts. Um, you know, and what I mean by casting it out is refusing to give it uh, meditation. Some people, it's hard for them to, to not think about things. So what you want to do is replace it with positive thoughts. And that's not what they did when, when the devil put it into their hearts put it into the husband heart, he began to, out of fear, hold some of the stuff back and then just give up the rest. That's not faith. Faith is giving into the kingdom. Fear is holding it back. That's the devil system. Amen. So I won't reteach that. I was reviewing it, but you know, you get caught up in reviewing it. So we bless God. So she died. The husband died. And when, when word got sent out, what happened? Folk was scared. Nevertheless, they begin, and, and this fear was reverence of God to know that he don't play. Uh, but nevertheless, they begin to praise God. They begin to worship him. However, not a lot of people were quick to run uh, and, and, and join that ministry, which is rightfully so. Because you don't want people of all walks of life coming in, joining a ministry if they're not ready for it. And we have an opportunity to see that here um, um, in, in verse uh, uh, 13 here, in 5 and 13, where it says, And the rest dare not man join himself to them, but the people did magnify them. So, you know, everybody, you know, they didn't, they weren't quick to run and join the ministry, uh, especially after they just seen what happened when Ananias and Sapphira, they weren't quick to, to, uh, to uh, subject themselves to that, knowing that they may not be strong enough to be used. And it's not about our strength. It's about our willingness to be used. Amen. Uh, and, and so it, it was really honorable that they didn't join themselves. Amen. Uh, going on with the review here, uh, the, the, the apostles were imprisoned uh, uh, by the high priest, uh, you know, for preaching, preaching the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, um, as they were put into jail, the angel of the Lord came in that night and released them from prison and told them, I need you to get on back and, and, and continue the ministry. And it's important that you preach all the words of this life. And he's talking about salvation. What, what the Lord Jesus Christ had done for you guys, you need to go preach that. So the angel came and took them on out of jail. And when they got out of jail, the angel closed the gate up uh, uh, as, as though... Uh, and then watch this. There are also men outside. So not only did he let them out of jail, but he gave them, uh, uh, he, I don't want to say invisible passage, if you will, but it was something to that degree where they were able to slip past the guards because not only were the door locked, but there were also men guarding outside and uh, they were they were never made aware of what happened. They didn't know that they, that these men were free. But Paul and them, I'm not Paul, but Peter and them, they never ran away. They only, they only, uh, uh, you know, escape that they may teach the gospel later on in the morning. Amen. As we, uh, as we come down here, the once the morning came and and the council convened together, they sent the guards to go back to the prisons and open the doors. Uh, to to go get the the apostles and then bring them back so that they can be questioned. And when they found the 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 uh, uh, the prison empty, but as it, it says here in verse twenty three, the prison truly we found shut with all safety, or as the way that we left it, it was left secure. It says, and the keepers standing without, or the keepers standing outside, which means the guards were standing outside. It says, and that but we found the doors closed, but those men were not there. And uh, they were like, what's going on? 
Uh, naturally, they would probably get ready to br to blame it on the guards. Uh, nevertheless, uh, someone came running in and, and letting a council that convened, letting them know that the men that, that, that you're seeking, the men that you had in jail, they over there in the temple uh, preaching and, and teaching. Uh, so nevertheless, uh, the the captain and the officers uh, brought you know brought the man back without violence because they feared the people, and they began to question them. And the council said, "Didn't we?" And he's talking to the disciples, the the apostles. Didn't we tell you not to preach this name, Jesus Christ? You know, you trying to you trying to resurrect something that we tried to lay lay to the grave. You're trying to resurrect it to, to charge us with the blood on, on, on our hands from that man. And uh, Peter was saying it's best for us to to obey God uh, rather than you guys. And uh, they, you know, when they said that, they wanted to kill him. Uh, but then, God, you know, God has people everywhere. And there was a, a guy that rose up by the name of Gamaliel. And he, he was a scholar. He was a teacher of the law. And he began to go and say that, you know, every time people have always risen up to, to claim that they were uh, uh, influenced by a, a, a messianic guidance, you know, as though that they were the chosen Messiah, their claims have always come to nothing. And so with Gamaliel, be, and he was well respected. That's why they, they, they adhered to whatever he was saying. The council did. Uh, Gamaliel goes forth as to say that if these men... Uh, if the things that they're doing be of man, it 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 will come to an end. It will come to naught. But if it be of God, you know, he said, we you want to be mindful of that because you don't know that you think that you're having confrontation with this man. <laughs> and unfortunately, you'll end up without ever knowing it by mistake, end up having confrontation with God on this if these men be of God. So I think that's going to wrap up chapter five there. It says that uh, verse 41, and the men, they went their way, depart, they departed from the council rejoicing, um, you know, that they were counting on oh, the men, the, the council, nevertheless, the council did beat them somewhat of a parting gift, a, a going away gift. And so the disciples, they all went away rejoicing uh, that they were counted worthy to suffer shame in his name. And daily in the temple and every house they cease not to teach and preach in Jesus' name. So that's going to take care of the review of Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 6 is real short. Acts chapter 7 is it's a little long, so hopefully we'll, we'll be able to get to chapter 7. But let's go forth in chapter 6 here. And in those days when a number of the disciples were multiplied, there arose murmurings of the Grecians. The Grecians here, I want you to substitute the word Grecians with the word uh, Hellenist. And Hellenists were nothing but Greek-speaking Jews, amen, Greek-speaking Jews. Uh, nevertheless, the Greek-speaking Jews had a problem with the Hebrews uh, because their, their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. So basically the Hellenist widows um, were, were not receiving the, the daily distribution of food or whatever else that, he, that, that Jewish women had received. The Grecian women were not receiving the same portion or the same kind of distribution, amen? So they took issue with the Hebrews over that. Uh, then the 12 called, the, and we're talking about the apostles, the 12 apostles uh, called the multitude of disciples unto them and said, it is not reason or it's not desirable for us that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. You know, we it's this is not what God has called us to do to you know, to to be out here, uh, uh, um, you know, distributing, uh, you know, the food to the women. The basically what was happening is what the disciples are saying and what the apostles are saying is that God has called us to make sure that the gospel get out here. But as we're in here dealing with these other matters, it's stagnating us from adhering to the purpose. Therefore, we need to we need to appoint some people over these things because we don't want to neglect it. You know, there is a valid complaint. We care for the needs of our brothers and sisters, but it's attending to this need is taken away from the purpose of the gospel. That's what's going on here. So what's happening in verse three, wherefore, brother, look ye out among yourself, for choose you out seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom 
who we may appoint over this business so that they don't want to just walk away from the business. They want to make sure that the business is taken care of, but they don't want their purposes stagnating, stagnated by, by businesses that, that other godly men could perform. Amen. Or a task, I should say. They didn't want uh, ta the, the, this task to keep them away from this purpose. Uh, so they said, you know, look out and find some God-fearing men of those that you hear great things about, the way that they run their household. They're not out there sleeping around. Uh, uh, you know, these are God-fearing men. And what it is to be God-fearing, it's it's being mindful of, of how God feels about what you do. Uh, it's respecting his thoughts about your actions. Amen. Uh, um, uh, if you, uh, you know, I don't know, you know, maybe uh, uh, drugs, strip, you know, flirting, uh, 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 you know, adultery. Those of you that may be caught up in sin and you, you don't care about the re repercussions at that time. That's not God fearing. Uh, God fearing is when you're tempted um and 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 if you know if you begin to meditate on that temptation he's like whoa i'm mm -mm. number one I, I honor my god i'm not going to do that you know god has been too good to me he's also given me the strength that i can see what's going on here and nothing you know these are that's being god fearing when you're mindful about what he may think about what you're about to do and you don't do it because of your thoughts towards him concerning his thoughts towards you. Amen. So this was one of the requirements that someone should have had on their resume at the time that they were being selected to handle the business of God and the, the distribution of the portions to those that were widows, those who husbands are, had died. They were just as important. Uh, uh, but that task was time consuming. That's why you wanted to put men, godly men in charge of godly business. Amen. Let me go on with that. I know I'm taking a little time with that. Uh, nevertheless, so they were to choose seven men of honest report or seven godly men full of wisdom uh, uh, who may have, who may be chosen over the business. And we would get. But then the, the apostle said we would give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word, which is the gospel. Amen. Uh, verse five in the same pleased the whole multitude. It says, and they chose Stephen, a, a, a man full of faith in the Holy Ghost. Uh, Philip, uh, 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 Prochorus, I'm sorry, his name, Prochorus, Philip and Prochorus, uh, Nicanor, uh, I got these names written out, uh, uh, Nicanor or Nicanor, and Timon and Par uh, Parmenus and Nicholas, a proselyte of, Ant of uh, Antioch. And, and a proselyte is a convert, if you will, a convert of Antioch. Of Antioch. He originated from Antioch. Amen. Nevertheless, uh, whom they sent before the apostles, so these were the seven here, and when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. Uh, so this is where we get this from as well, just as Jesus did. It says, and the word of God increased, and the, it says, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. It says, and a great company of the of the priests were obedient to the faith. So they're making sure that that all facets of of the business of God is taken care of, and you can see the blessings of it. For them addressing it, you know, verse seven and the word of God increased and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly and a great company of the priest, even the priest were obedient to the faith. Amen. So you can see the blessings of the Lord because everything is being done in decency and in order. Uh, going to verse 8, and Stephen full of faith and power. We're talking about him uh, being filled with the Holy Ghost. And watch what is watch one of the characteristics of, of Stephen, full of faith. I mean, he lives by the word of God. The way you do, your faith is increased by the word of God being increased within you. Therefore, that establishes trust. And when you trust God to be the head of your life and to do great things in your life. You see the power of God evident in your life. And this is what's saying. It's, a, it's establishing the character. And then it's it, not only is it establishing the character, it's telling you what's behind the character of Stephen. Amen. And it said he did great wonders and miracles 
uh, uh, amongst the people. It said, then arose certain of the synagogue, uh, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines. And, and it said, there arose certain of the synagogue. Th this is the assembly of the Jews. And within the midst of this, the assembly of the Jews was a sect of people called the, uh, was, was the people called the, the, um, the Libertines. And the Libertines were slaves who had been freed uh, um, along with their descendants. Amen. That's where libertines were. They were they were those that had been that were once slaves that had been freed along with their descendants. So in the in the midst of the assembly of the Jews, uh, there were the the libertines, those that used to be slaves. It says, and there were Cyrenians and Alexandrians and and uh, 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 the uh, Cilicius, uh, Cilicius of Asia. And, and they were disputing or they were debating with Stephen, amen? And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit which he spake, it says. And they, and they began to bribe men in verse 11, which said, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and, and against God. So you had, you had these men that became envious of, of, of uh, Stephen. And, and Stephen became mighty because of the, he was full he was a faith he was full of faith which means he was full of power more faith is more power this is you just can't get beyond that and and so therefore because watch this because he's full of faith which means he's full of word that means he's full of wisdom there you go and this wisdom is being challenged by, by the Cyrenians, Alexandrians, the, 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 the Cilicians of uh, Asia, they're beginning to debate him, to challenge the wisdom as though he don't know what he's talking about. And when they couldn't overcome him, they thought it was best to lie on him because this was, the, this, this, was uh, uh, um, this was retribution for embarrassing them. For, you know, you you figure if you're gonna challenge him, then you think you know something. So you're matching your wit against his wit. That means it's not enough for you to think you know something, but you want everybody else to think you know something too, right? So they begin to challenge him openly, you know. And of course, that spirit—they not knowing they think they challenging him, but they challenging the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you're not going man. There's no challenge for the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost put him in their place. So now they want to deliver the man up. Because they were embarrassed, if you will, uh, going down to verse eleven. So they they uh, 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 they bribe men. When you see the word stubborn, they, it's a bribe. They begin to bribe men, and those bribe men said, "We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God." See, those that 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 challenged him in the debate. You know, and debated him according to the wisdom that he had. They're they're putting their understanding against his wisdom, and they, you're gonna lose every time. Uh, the the scripture says the foolishness of the it says the 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 uh, 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 to a natural man the things are God is considered foolishness. So they're trying to challenge him based on their own understanding against his wisdom. Um, they can't themselves deliver him because those that are spectators. Uh, if they themselves go to the council and to the chief priest and say that these men were blasphemous, you know, they're saying that, that, that Stephen was blasphemous. He said this and he said that, you know, somebody will come forth and say, no, they just mad because he embarrassed them. So it was better to put the responsibility of a lie in somebody else's saying, even though it originated from you, it's going to be more credible to someone that didn't have conflict with you at the beginning. Amen. And so that's what's that's what's going on here. So they they pay for somebody to come forth and lie about what Stephen said and did. Uh, verse 12. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and called him and brought him to the council and set up false witnesses, which said, this man ceases not to speak blasphemous words against the holy place and the law. We have heard him say that Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place, shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. And all that sat in the council looking, looking or focused on him, you know, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. That's because the Holy Ghost, he was full of the Holy Ghost. 
Amen. And as they're seeing his face and it's looking as though it's the, as it's the face of an angel, it's because the Holy Ghost is about to speak. Amen. Now, let's go right into chapter 7 here. Then said the high priest, are these things so? And he said, men, now this is the Holy Ghost beginning to, to, uh, to speak for him, beginning, beginning to testify for him. Amen. Uh, he said, men, brethren, father, hearken. It said, the God of glory appeared unto our father A Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia. It said, before he dwelt in Haran. And said unto him, get thee out of thy country, uh, get thee from thy kindred, and come into the land which I shall show thee. So you can find this. Those of you that have been following our Bible study back in Genesis, you'll be able to relate to, to what was just said here. Because the Holy Ghost is recalling some events that had happened then that explains where they are today amen going on with this verse 4 then came he out of the land of the Chalde of the chaldeans and dwelt in heron and from thence when his father was dead he removed him and he's talking about god removed abraham into this land where he now dwell and he gave him none inheritance in it no not so much as to set his foot on yet he promised that he would give it to him as a possession and and a seed after him as he it says when he was yet had no child so before he even seen it before he even was uh, you know before he ever seen it or his foot would ever uh lay you know lay rest to the ground of the land that God had promised him God promised him before he would ever see it and and God said that your children your seed will possess this land that I want to give you and at that time Abraham even Abraham had no kids up there in age, his wife couldn't have kids, you know, so he's talking about the Holy Ghost is bringing up the faith of Abraham, how God made promises to him that seemed somewhat obscure, you know, I'm going to give you a land to which you ain't even seen yet, and your kids are going to be the ones that possesses this land, and you can't even have kids, okay? So those of you that follow our Bible study, you should be familiar with that. Uh, verse uh, verse 5, and gave him a uh, verse 6. And God spake on the wise, or on this note, that his seed should stay in a strange land, and that they, that they should bring them into bondage, and entreat them evil four hundred years. So God God spoke to Abram and told Abram what would what would uh, what would happen. He says the land that I, that I'm going to take you to. He said your your seed is going to, uh, 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 you know, your seed is going to be in bondage by the Egyptians. He says, but don't worry about it. I'm going to free them, you know, and, and, and they will get a chance to possess the land, but they'll be in bondage to the Egyptians or slaves, if you will, for 400 years. He says, and that nation to whom they shall be bondage, I will judge, or I'm going to get them back for making, for making, them, for making you become slaves or making your descendants become slaves. He says, and after that, they shall come forth and serve me in this place or in the land that I shall give them. It says, and he gave him the covenant of circumcision. You should be familiar with that. And so Abraham begot Isaac and circumcised him on the eighth day. And Isaac begot Jacob and Jacob begot the 12 patriarchs. And the patriarchs moved with envy and sold Joseph into Egypt, but God was with them. We haven't covered that yet in the Bible study, but stay with us. We'll, the Lord and the leading of the Lord, I'm pretty sure will lead us right into it. Um, and so here's a prelude of it right now. Amen. Look at that. The leading of the Lord here. Uh, nevertheless, uh, verse 10, and delivered him out of, his, out of his inflictions and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So in the midst of his captor, Joseph had favor with, with, with the head of Egypt, with the, with the king of Egypt, which was Pharaoh. You know, uh, going on here, he said he made him governor over his over over Egypt and all his house. He made so the so the king of Egypt uh, uh, made a slave the second in command of Egypt, and even over his own house, he made him head over his house. Amen. God is awesome. Verse eleven. Now there came a dart. That if you see dart, it's a drought. There came a drought over all the land of Egypt and Canaan in great affliction. It says, and our fathers found no sus no sustenance or substance, if you will, uh, those things that would sustain them physically, uh, food, water, you know, what have you. Uh, but when Jacob heard that there was corn, and in this case that there was grain in Egypt, when Jacob heard that there was grain in Egypt, 
he sent out our fathers first and it's talking about the patriarchs uh some of the patriarchs he sent them out it says and 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 and, and patriarchs are the sons of jacob if you will jacob name later is going to be changed to to uh, uh israel but jacob's kids are are the the patriarchs or his his these are 12 princesses or 12 kings if you will and they call them patriarchs here but remember they had sold as as stephen is saying here as the holy ghost is staying, saying here that uh they sold one of their brothers so their remaining uh children the father did send out uh uh to uh not all the not all the sons but some of the sons the father did send out to egypt to try to get grain uh or you know for food you know to be able to eat and, and cook with because of the drought was so severe amen and they didn't know that their brother uh joseph was the governor of egypt they sold him a long time ago they had intentions to kill him but one of their other brothers rose up against that and and convinced them to just sell him rather than kill him and it, it's all because of god but we'll hit that time we'll hit that when the time come but let's stick let's stick with this here i'm just trying to explain to you what the holy ghost is trying to tell the chief priest uh, going on here uh, in verse uh, 13 and not the second time well let me read verse 12 but when Jacob heard that there was grain in Egypt he sent out our fathers first and not the second time Joseph was made known to his brother and then Joseph Kendra was made known unto Pharaoh then said then sent Joseph and called uh, his father Jacob to him and all his kindred three score and fifteen souls which is about 75 people so Joseph being the governor told Pharaoh that that's my kindred. They don't know it, but that's my kindred. So what 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 uh, what Joseph said is I'll keep I'll keep my brother here. I'll keep one of my brothers here. You go back and go get go get your dad and go get all those that are with them and bring them on out here to Egypt. You know, uh, ver uh, verse fourteen. Then sent Joseph and called his father Jacob to him and and all that. You know, maid servants, kids. You know, kids, kids, what have you. Uh, so it was about 75 people of them that came up out of where they were going into Egypt. These are Jacob's family. This is Jacob. This is a, a Joseph family here. So Jacob went down into Egypt and he died. He and our fathers and they were carried over into Sechem and laid in the, in the sepulchre or in the tomb that Abraham bought for the sum among the other sons of Emmer, the father of Sechem. Now change Abraham to Jacob. Jacob brought for for the sum of money of the sons of and change Emor to Hamor H A M O R we haven't covered that yet that's around the thirty third chapter of the book of Genesis we'll get into that but you want to change Abraham to Jacob and you want to change Ham uh, Emor to Hamor okay they're the ones Jacob is the one that that bought this parcel of land. Okay, verse 17. But when the time of the promise drew near that God had that God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt. He's talking about the slaves, till another king arose which knew not Joseph. Okay, so those that went into Egypt, Jacob and them, they began to multiply. Okay. And as they multiply, this other king, as a, as they come into the land of Egypt. They began to multiply. Remember, they started out 75 souls, uh, 75 people. Uh, they, the way they got into Egypt was because there was a drought. Joseph was the head of Egypt. Joseph had his family to come into Egypt, and, and they lived there. They lived there happily because of the favor that Joseph had with Pharaoh. But now... As the as the children of Israel or the children of Jacob or the people of Jacob begin to multiply, there is another king that's present in Egypt, another Pharaoh. Amen. So here we are till another king arose, which knew not ja which knew not Joseph. It says, so all the covenant that Joseph had with the old Pharaoh, there was no covenant with this new Pharaoh here. And, sa and the same dealt uh, deceitfully with our kindred and even entreated our evil and treated our fathers or treated our fathers with evil uh, harshness so that they cast out their young children to the end that they might not live. So their babies, they tried to kill, uh, you know, they try to do what they can to keep them from continually to multiply. It says, and in that time, Moses was born and was exceeding fair and nourished up in his father's house three months. 
Um, and when he was cast out, uh, Pharaoh's daughter took him and, and nourished him for her own son. So during the time that Pharaoh wanted to kill the Hebrew children, they sent Moses. They, they, they didn't cast him out. They, 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 they kind of uh, filled him in somewhat of a basket and kind of set him a course. And Pharaoh's daughter, uh, seeing this Hebrew child, you know, remember we're talking about Egypt. Pharaoh's daughter seen this Hebrew child and took this child and raised her as as her own as her own child. Amen. And then that's who Moses was. Um, um, bless you, God. You are awesome. This is this is a Bible study within a Bible study. You got the Old Testament and the New Testament all in one uh, going on here. Um, in which Moses was born exceeding fair. Uh, verse 22, or actually verse 21. And when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up and nourished him for her own son. Uh, verse 22, and Moses was learned in all the wisdom of, of the Egyptians and was mighty in the words of the deeds. You know, and, and you know, he, he began because he's Pharaoh's daughter, the king's daughter. He had some authority. He had some favor. And this was a Hebrew child. Um, and he, he understood their customs. He understood how they acted. He understood their language. Amen. He understood uh, those things that they liked and disliked. He understood their customs. Okay. Uh, verse 23. And when he was full 40 years old, it came to his heart to visit his brother, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffering wrongly, he defended them and avenged them that that was oppressed and smote the Egyptian. One of the Egyptians, the Egyptians was being hard on one of his brethren and his brethren were the Hebrews. And um, he, when he confronted the matter, it, it turned violent and he ended up uh, killing uh, uh, one of the oppressors, one of the Egyptians that was oppressing the, 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 the Israelians um, or the Hebrews, I should say. Uh, verse, uh, uh, verse 20, 25, for he supposed his brethren would have understood how that God by his hand would deliver them, but they understood not. And the next day he showed himself unto, unto them as they strove and would not set them at one another, say, or, or excuse me, and, and would have set them at one again, saying, Sirs, you are brethren, why do you wrong and, and do this to them? So he's seen the Egyptians kind of striving against one another. And and he's trying to minister to them, if you will. Uh, this was this happened the next day after they witnessed him killing the one uh, Egyptian. And here's what they said: but that, but that he, excuse me, but he that did this, he that did his neighbor wrong, thrust him away, saying, "Who made thee a ruler and a judge over us? Would thou kill me as thou did the Egyptian yesterday?" Then fled Moses at this saying, and was a stranger in the land of Midian where he begot two sons. So Moses thought that, that his brother and the southern them appreciate Moses was trying to, to, they were conflicting the, the, there were, there was two that had problems in, okay. There was two of the Hebrews that were in prison that had problems one with another. Moses tried to get in it to try to reconcile the matter. And instead of them being appreciative of what he did for them the day before and all, they said, who you, who do you think you are? You think you're some kind of judge? We know what you did yesterday. We know that you killed, you killed the Egyptian. You can't be trusted the way you did that Egyptian. Are you going to do that to us too? Moses thought that they was going to tell on him. So he took off. He ran, he ran away. Uh, he went into the land of Midian where he ended up uh, living there and had two, two sons. And when, uh, when 40, when 40 years were expired, there arose to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai, the angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. And when Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight. And as, and, and as he drew near to behold it, the voice of the Lord came unto him. And this is about the, 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 the flaming bush, the burning bush. Probably heard that story there. And then uh, verse 32 saying that I am God of the father. I am God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then Moses trembled and 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 durst not behold or or dare not not witness. Even though he was trembled, he dared not witness. There, it said, then said the Lord to him, Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. I have seen, I have seen the afflictions of the people which are in Egypt. I have heard their groanings and come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send thee into Egypt, 
this Moses whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler or a judge? The same day God sent to be a ruler and a deliverer by the, by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the burning bush. Now, let's stop right there. This is still Stephen. This, this is still St uh, Stephen. The Holy Ghost is recalling events of what happened then and why they are where they are today. Because what happened then is significant of how they got to where they are today. And the Holy Ghost is putting this whole thing together in front of the chief priest. Amen. So it's going back in order to go forward. Now let's go on with this. It says, uh, verse 36, And he brought them out after that he had showed wonders uh, and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness 40 years. And this is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto unto uh, your brethren, like unto me him whom shall ye hear. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness when the angel which spake unto him in Mount Sinai uh, with our fathers who received the lively oracles uh, to give unto us. And he's talking about the commandments of God. Amen. It says, to, our, to whom our fathers would not obey, but thrust him from them, and their hearts turned back unto Egypt. Turn, in their hearts turned back again unto Egypt. So they're saying that the same Moses that God used to go in and to, to bring the, the Hebrews out from Egypt, this is the same father of ours that our own forefathers tried to turn around and go back to Egypt because they didn't respect what Moses was doing for them. So he said, if anybody know, y'all saying that I'm speaking against Moses, if anybody know what Moses is doing, I got what Moses had done. I got great respect for what Moses had done. And so he's telling the story by way of the Holy Ghost, saying unto Aaron, make us gods uh, to go before us. For as this Moses, which brought us out of the land of Egypt, we would not, we would not uh, what has become of him. We, well, we don't know what's becoming him because Moses was up in the mountain talking to God at the time. So Aaron, who was in charge, who was one of the priests that was in charge, they told Aaron to make them um, some false gods because they feared that something happened to Moses because he was up in the mountain uh, 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 being ministered to with God. It says, and they made a calf in those days and offered sacrifices unto the idols and rejoiced in their own, with their own hands. Then God turned and gave them to up to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets. O ye house of Israel, ye have offered me the slain beasts and sacrifices uh, by the space of 40 years in the wilderness. Ye, yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the stars of your God, uh, Remphan. Of figures which ye made to worship them, and I would carry you away beyond Babylon. So God was not happy, you know, throughout the course of years. God was not happy. They spent these 40 years in the wilderness, and all they did was disobey them, brought in other gods throughout their throughout this relationship before Jesus came. That's all they were doing was backsliding. It says, uh, our fathers had the tabernacle of witness uh, in the wilderness as he had appointed, speaking unto Moses that we, that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen it, uh, which are, which also our fathers that came after brought in with Joshua into possession of the Gentiles whom God drove out before the face of our fathers until the days of David. So it's saying that even after Moses' death, um, down the line you had Joshua and Joshua was able to lead uh, the, the children into the promised land and those Gentiles that were on the pro that was on the promised land God used Joshua and all the others to drive them out because of the land that he promised to give to 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 their forefathers and then it says he God drove out before the face of the of our fathers even unto the days of David it said who found favor before God and desired to find a tabernacle but uh, for the God of Jacob. So, so it said that Moses built the tabernacle for God just as God wanted it. It says, and down the line, David wanted to do it too. Uh, David wanted to actually build a kingdom for God. It says, but Solomon built him a house because God wouldn't let J uh, David do it. God told David that there was too much blood on his hands because David was the king of, of the Jews. David was the king of Israel. The problem is David was a man of war. 
and 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 a lot of the wars were necessary and because of that david had a lot of blood on his hands the lord didn't want david to do it because of that but david's son solomon he did allow him to build him a kingdom amen or a tabernacle you know however you look at it um a dwelling place you can call it is that 48 Howbeit the most high dwelleth not in temples made with hands i said the prophet heaven is my throne earth is my footstool what house will ye build me saith the lord or what is the place of my rest have not my hands made all these things what can y'all do for me that i who <laughs> if heaven is if, if heaven is my home and earth is my footstool what do you, why do you put so much emphasis on building these big synagogues he says you think y'all doing it for me he says, look at what I've built for y'all. You, you think that you have majesty, that you can build something for me, and I'm supposed to dwell there? Do you know that I am God? I am bigger than anything that you think that you can house me in? What, you want to put, you want to put me in a senior home and leave me there? You know, and you can say that you was able to place me somewhere? God, it's not like that. It's not going to happen. You know, so sometimes when men want to do things for God, they got to check the ego and make sure that they're not doing it under themselves and trying to attach God's name to it. Amen. Let's go on with this. It says, have not my hands made all these things? Ye step now. Now the Holy Ghost as they get done bringing them from the past to the present. It begins to go off here. Verse 51. Ye stiff necked which is stubborn and uncircumcised in your heart and ears. Ye always do resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. Oh, man, <laughs> which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? They have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one. And it's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. It says that he what he's saying here is all those that God has sent to testify to, to our, our forefathers about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. All y'all done was kill them, stone them. You found cause to kill them. And all they wanted to do was testify about a deliverer that was going to come and represent the mercies and the fulfillment of the word of God. Boy, it getting me hyped. <laughs> it's getting me, make me want to call, call folks stiff neck, you know, but I've come from an area too of being stubborn, stiff neck, hard of hearing. We all come from that when we were in our ways and didn't want to adhere to God. And, and they were, you know, God was sending men and women to come and talk to us and minister about the danger of our ways and we would block our own ears out. So is what was happening then, except that they would kill them. Amen. But he goes on here. This is Steph, This is Stephen still being possessed by the Holy Ghost. Uh, goes on to say here in verse 53. Uh, well, actually, let me finish uh, verse uh, 52. It says, of whom you have now, you have been now the betrayers and murderers. It says, who have received the law by the disposition of the angels or by the instruction of the angels and have not kept it. Going on to 54, when they heard these things, the chief priests is who they're talking about, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. They're like, you know, they're just angry, you know, just fiercely and they, they, they're in rage because at first he started to minister to them and you could tell he got their attention. But then all of a sudden the Holy Ghost just started to let them have it. And you, you have to think that if the Holy Ghost was ministering to them, it kind of changed course. It seems like the Holy Ghost may have changed course because it, 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 the message wasn't getting to them. You can see here in verse um, verse 51, as, as he's going back, as the Holy Ghost is going back to try to make the case of why they're here, something must have been happening with the chief council, with the chief priest in them, you know, that they just wasn't getting it. And so the Holy Ghost was just like, y'all not going to get this. And, and let me tell you why you're not going to get it. And he goes on to say there um, about their ears. He goes on to say, you uncircumcised in your heart and in your ears. You don't have ears that's trying to receive the word. And you, ain't, you don't have a heart that's willing to accept the truth. It's always your way. So the Holy Ghost deviated from trying to reason with them and get them to understand it and maybe an effort to convert them in a sense it began to switch gears to persecuting them for not receiving the truth amen so they 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 broke out in a rage <laughs> which they wasn't far from in the first place 
uh, 55. But he been been full of the Holy Ghost. So you can see it's the Holy Ghost that's doing this. Uh, but he being full of the Holy Ghost, look up steadfastly or focused into heaven, look up straight ways into heaven. It says, and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on his right hand the right hand of God. And what I like about this is this is this is amazing. Stephen as he's looking up and he's 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 being lit, he's full of the spirit, he looks up. He doesn't see Jesus setting. Jesus knows he's about to receive Stephen. So Jesus is standing as though he's about to he's about to receive him. Jesus is ready. He's like in a ready position. This oh man, this is heavy. Going on here. Uh, he and and in verse fifty six and said, "Behold, I see heaven open up." This is this is Stephen talking. I see heaven open up, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. It says, "Then they cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears and ran unto him with one accord." You know, they they didn't want to hear no more. They stopped their ears and ran upon him uh, with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. You know. And and the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. So when he starts saying that he see he see Christ Jesus and, and he sees God, they they're like, This is blasphemy. We're not gonna hear no more. What more evidence do we need? Take him, take him out of the city and kill him. You know, and, and that's exactly what happened. Now something significant happened. It said the witnesses took their clothes and laid it down at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. Remember this because this is the start of the, the, the rest of the New Testament right here. This is it. Once we get into, you know, you get into Romans, you get into to the Corinthians, all this has to do with Saul, Saul right here. And such is the rest of, of the book of Acts, if you think about it. Uh, Peter, the, the rest of the book of Acts is primarily is going to be about the ministry of Peter and and Paul, which at this point in time is named Saul. So let me let's go on here and we can wrap this up. And they stoned stuff and calling upon God, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. See, and Jesus was ready to receive it. Oh man, can you imagine uh Jesus standing in that position ready to receive us? You know, as 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 Stephen was you know, as they were about to stone G as they were about to stone Stephen. Jesus knew that he was about to receive him. Jesus is going to be in a, in a standing position when he's ready to receive us because he's going to be on a cloud. Amen. And he's going to be standing on a cloud and, 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 and waiting to receive us too. And this is major. It's, it's amazing. Um, I get excited about this. Y'all got to forgive me. This is major. Um, verse 60. And he knelt down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, Lay not the sins of their lay not the this sin to their charge. He goes on to say, and he goes on to say that when he had said this, he fell asleep or he gave up the ghost. Fantastic Bible study. Um just gotta love it. You just gotta love it. And it's this food and, and just I appreciate God taking time to come and uh, you know, opening up uh, uh our understanding, you know, and, and allowing us to uh to understand, you know, what, what things that were going on, and this should also help the relationship between you and the Father, uh, you and the Son. As you can see, Jesus is right there. And remember, at the start of the Book of Acts, Jesus, um, he was appearing, reappearing, reappearing, you know, and and and, and finally, when he appeared for the last time, he was. Um, ministering to the disciples and telling them about the function of the kingdom of God. Finally, he went and ascended up into his father. And we see where he sits now on the right hand side of his father. And at that time he was standing about to. Re so we see where Jesus is. And you got and remember, you got the Trinity there, uh, uh, the Trinity. Uh, Stephen was full of the Holy Ghost. So so you had the Holy Ghost right there with Stephen and then the father. And the Son, you had the Trinity right there. So we could stop right there. Lord willing, uh, we'll pick up on chapter eight next time. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't open this 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 relationship that we have right now with with the Lord God and Jesus uh, through the Holy Ghost and this Word. Uh, those of you that that's not feeling it, those of you that haven't received this, this thing is real. 
this thing is real and this thing is mighty and it's full of love and it's full of power. God will love you like no one else can. God will take care of you like no one else will. And when you when when we give marriage vows, those of you that have done weddings before, and you 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 tell your clients, if you will, um, uh, uh, do you take him or her for better or for worse? God, you don't have to ask God to accept you for better or for worse because God knew what your downfalls were before he made you. He knew what your weaknesses was before he he made you. He knew what components that you would fall to and what other things that you would rise for. He knew these things about you. He still seen the best in you. While this world focuses on the worst in you, God sees the best in you. This is why he's always trying to keep you, those of you that haven't been caught by God or that don't want to be caught or, or resisting being caught of God, he's, he's, he's still after you because he loves you. He knows you better than your parents do, better than your significant other will. He knows the greatness about you and he put into the chambers of your heart a purpose that only you are able to accomplish. And it all has to do with the expansion or the perfection of the kingdom of God. It is your part within the kingdom. He's placed it in you. But in order for you to adhere to that, you have to come to his son. You have to come to the father through the son that was already stayed standing and waiting to receive one of the apostles. Imagine how he's waiting to receive you right now. He's standing on the side of his father wanting to receive you and he's waiting. He knows how the world has stoned you. He knows how the world has lied against you like they did like they did uh, uh, Stephen. How the, the devil has sent folk to sell you out at your job. Maybe you've been caught up on crimes that you've never committed. Somebody has paid somebody else to sell you out. Now you have to go answer like Stephen did. And you're trying to explain how you got here. You're trying to tell them how you got there, but they won't listen. You know why they won't listen? Because you, and, and, and here's, the, here's one of the reasons now. You don't have the Holy Ghost in you. Because you haven't received the Lord Jesus Christ. They didn't want to listen to Stephen even with the Holy Ghost. But you're talk but he was purposed to be where he is. And I'm saying that you have a purpose in your life too. But you got to have the Holy Ghost. Don't make your death in vain. And what I mean is something can happen to you at any time. At least Stephen had received. God. He received the Lord Jesus Christ. So when they took Stephen out. He's, his soul went up into heaven and Jesus was waiting to receive him. If something happened to you because of the devil is after, he's after you to kill you and you have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. Once he, uh, once he completes that, if you haven't accepted Jesus to where you'd be able to see your soul is about to go to G, your, your spirit is about to be ascended up into heaven to, to reside with Jesus. If you haven't accepted him, then you're about to descend by the hands of your captors. Why would you want that? God loves you. Loves you. Loves so much about you. The things that he has put in you, you have not yet discovered. The things that he wants you to do, you have not even come into. And the place that he has prepared for you to go, you have not even seen it. But it's all yours. You know why? Because he loves you. He loves you so much. He knew what they were going to do to Jesus Christ. But he knew that it would be worth it just to have them live with me eternally. And Jesus did it. What are you willing to do now? Because the ball is in your court. Oh, my brothers and sisters. Don't, don't waste time on the world and on the enemy. Don't waste time in undecision, being indecisive. If you have the opportunity to take him and live for him, then take advantage of it. If you're ready, 
and you believe this thing in your heart, you're ready to confess, confess this with your mouth and say this with me. Oh, Lord God, I come before you right now. You know my sins. You know of all the things that I've committed wrong. Now, Father, I believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is the only begotten child of God. I believe that you said Jesus Christ down to earth. And God, I believe that he was killed. And I believe that Jesus was buried. But I believe that Jesus was resurrected on the third day and soon after ascended up into heaven. Now you call on Jesus. You say, Jesus, I call on you right now to come into my life and to forgive me for all of my sins. You say, come in to me and come in through me. Live in me. And live through me, sweet Jesus Christ. Your life being now my life, my life is now your life. From this day forward, forever your servant. Praise God. If you said that, if you confess that, and you believe that in your heart, praise God. You've just been saved. Trust him to clean up those things in your life because you are not able to. You are now the recipient of the Holy Ghost because you've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's the Holy Ghost's job to clean you up. No different than what Jesus did in the synagogue when he went up in there at the temple and he's seen the money changers in there all the elements of the world within the house of god and they were selling and doing this and doing that money changers jesus came in and cleaned that up and he did it violently kicked the money changers out flip tables over that's how he's going to do you he's going to do it aggressively he's going to clean you up and it ain't gonna be it ain't gonna it ain't gonna feel good but it's going to be well worth it because he's going to remake you from the inside out. A lot of times we try to change the outside in, but Jesus works on the inside out. You take, he's going to take care of the inside and the outside is going to fall into place. Now, you need to be baptized, my brother and my sister. So what has to happen is you need to call a man of God or you just need to go to a church. Let them know that you just received the, 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 the Lord Jesus Christ and you want to be baptized in his name. And that man of God is going to come to your home or again, he's going to have you come to his church. And he's going to totally submerge you into the water and you're going to go down one creature and come up a new creature. Okay. All of this is made possible by the, by the sacrificial lamb, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Those of you that haven't accepted the Lord Jesus Christ yet, you're still... Uh, seesaw and teeter tottering uh, you can go to our website there's a salvate there's a salvation page if you click on that salvation page it, it has what you need to be right before the lord jesus christ i thank you for allowing me to to, to take this opportunity to uh to take part in your day to with the word of god and i hope uh, i hope uh, that god is moving through your life uh through this word here come back and join us again uh, from my wife and my myself, we love you and we thank you for allowing us to be a part of your life. In Jesus' name, we hope to see you again. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. <laughs>